World Health Organization member states are negotiating an agreement to strengthen pandemic prevention, preparedness, and response, citing the millions of lives lost during the COVID-19 outbreak. Africa in particular struggled to access vaccines that were produced in developed nations. Darren Taylor reports. The WHO says the accord is driven by the need to ensure communities, governments, and all sectors of society are better prepared and protected when the next global pandemic strikes. It says its 194 member states are committed to preventing a repetition of the suffering from COVID-19, mostly in 2020 to 2022. Advocate Fatima Hassan of the African Health Justice Initiative says the WHO pandemic accord must ensure that the response to deadly disease outbreaks isn't controlled by pharmaceutical companies. Rich nations in particular permit these companies to hoard the vaccine knowledge through excessive protections of intellectual property claims in a deadly policy choice. It relied on pharmaceutical companies' cooperation and volunteerism, which has not materialized. And by doing so, it allowed them to exercise market monopolies for profit motives and geopolitical considerations. Veteran South African health official Dr. Precious Matsoso is co-chairing the intergovernmental team set up to draft the WHO pandemic convention. She says the agreement should ensure that poorer nations get enough vaccines. This time around, even if the well-established economies decide to produce for their own citizens, they should at least do one thing and one thing only, allow for technology transfer that will enable diversified production. Because in that case, in the African region, we can then have production of supplies that can be distributed across the whole region. Matsoso says developed countries should commit to helping African companies produce vaccines from scratch. She welcomes the launch last week in Paris of the African Vaccine Manufacturing Accelerator. It's an initiative aimed at boosting vaccine production on the continent. Some European countries, the United States and others, have pledged to contribute more than $1 billion towards scaling up capacity to make vaccines. Matsoso tells VOA one proposed clause in the WHO pandemic agreement concerns domestic financing and that countries should establish funds according to their means to deal with the next outbreak. Countries can't just wait for handouts, you know. They have also a responsibility towards their own populations and they have to ensure that they make wise investments. They can put money where it matters most to ensure prevention as well as preparedness. Countries have to prepare. They shouldn't prepare when we're already in crisis times. During peace times, this is where these investments should be made. Matsoso is encouraged that the first article to be approved under the accord concerns health workers during a pandemic. The health workers were at the front line of the pandemic. They will always be. They are the first port of call when we are hit with outbreaks. And it is for that reason that they should be the first to get protection, personal protection equipment. If there are vaccinations, they must be the first to be vaccinated. They must be the first to be diagnosed so that they must be able to protect others. Mats also expects the final draft of the Global Pandemic Accord to be completed by the end of 2024 or in early 2025. For VOA News, I'm Darren Taylor. The White House condemned on Wednesday the reported violence in Kenya where medics said 23 people had died this week after violent clashes between police and protesters. Kenyan President William Ruto on Wednesday withdrew planned tax rises, bowing to pressure from demonstrators who had stormed parliament and threatened more action this week. The United States is deeply concerned about and condemn the reported violence in all its forms. White House National Security Spokesman John Kibari told reporters. 
On Tuesday, police opened fire on clouds who massed around parliament and later broke into the assembly's compound minutes after lawmakers had voted through the tax measures. The United States has been in touch with the Kenyan government to urge appropriate use of force by the police to respect human rights and will continue to push for calm to prevail, said Kilby.